All right, well, this was supposed to be part three of the TIG Welder review series, along with the giveaway information. That's been delayed by about a week. I got a lot of parts to do with it, with a tight deadline that I have to, I got to get these parts out. It's coming soon. Meanwhile, today's video is really geared toward welding students. This is a 3G dual shield flux core plate test. 3G, that's vertical uphill. Coming soon will be the 4G. And so I really, I really hope this helps somebody out there pass a welding test betters their situation in life, helps them feed their family. Let's do it. Hey Jody here, WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I've got Andrew Carden here with me today. We're going to shoot some video on tips for helping you pass a 3G plate test with dual shield flux core. Let's hit the booth. Okay, let's hit it. This is Lincoln's Training and Distribution Center in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's set up just like a pretty normal welding school. Lots of booths. Of course, it's all Lincoln equipment, Lincoln ventilation stuff. Booths are really nice set up with all kinds of mixed gas. So we're, we've never been here before welding. So we're setting up here just like someone would come in for a welding test. And the first thing we're doing is tacking up some scrap metal. This is just half inch hot rolled plate. Kind of get the, kind of get the machine dialed in and see how it's going to run. And it's fairly close. You hear that sputter in there. That's mainly just because of the mill scale hasn't been removed at all on here. But so we're getting it dialed in as close as we think it needs to be for the root pass. And before we get started, let's talk about this machine and settings a little bit. All right, so we're using a, a 350 MP today. You see, we're, we're using 25 volts and 360 inches a minute with 045 wire. This machine's got a whole bunch of other settings on it. And so I'm just gonna get Andrew to step us through some of the settings that he likes to use for flux core. So basically, like you said, there's a lot of settings on here. I'm just gonna go through the basics. So the program that we have to set, we're just gonna set on five. That's just a constant voltage for flux core or short circuit MIG. You can run either or. As we go down, you have your pre-flow and your post-flow. I like to have just a little bit of pre-flow before my, my arc time initiates. So I have a half a second for pre-flow and then one whole second for post-flow just to allow that wire to cool a little bit. Um, as it's as it's coming off the weld. Next up we have your run-in time. This is just to allow for the puddle to start off at a slower pace so you're not going in there and the wires hitting and you know kind of jumping the gun a little bit, kind of it's a smoother arc here to start with. I would just run it right off of here, right off of program five, set a couple of those three things and then run it. So you don't use our control on flux core, but you would on other bare wire? If, if I was going to use it on a bare wire, I probably would just to get the spatter control down to what I like. Being flux core, you want that wire really driving in the joint. You don't want it to be flaring uh, flaring out prematurely because then it'll Sometimes cause, just fall out with you. It'll fall out yeah. or the middle just starts coming out because it doesn't have the arc force to push okay. it up against the, the okay. joint. Let's get back to welding. Or with any welding test, you want to make sure to remove all the all the mill scale at least a half inch away from where there's going to be any weld. Backing strap as well, and the back side of the plates. This is a very common plate test per D1.1 structural welding code. Pretty straightforward, 22 and a half degree bevels, quarter inch gap, quarter inch backing strap. And thanks to Triangle Engineering for providing the test plates and the backing straps for this video. Uh, they've got all kinds of test plates and pipe coupons. You can learn more at tryeng.com. Now, having a place to prop is not mandatory. It just really helps sometimes, especially since you're kind of nervous when you're taking a welding test. So you can use a pair of vice grips like this. Uh, this particular test stand has a, a swing arm to, to prop on. But if, if, if there isn't one available, you can usually figure out a way to, to prop, even if it's just lightly propping a pinky on the edge of the, the plate until it gets too hot. To do that. Now if you can hold it nice and steady just by kind of locking your elbows in at your side or something like that, that works fine. It's just that uh, if you need a place to prop, spend a little time in getting one. Now we dialed the, dialed the settings in here at what we felt like was a pretty good setting for this root pass. There's quite a big range that will work. This is 24 volts, 330 inches a minute. We ran as high as 360 inches a minute here with 25 volts. It just puts in a bigger root, and so it kind of makes it kind of hard to stack two in to fill on top of that root if the root is too big. But you, you want, you definitely want the root hot enough to really, really fuse in, really melt into those corners. You'll always want to clean everything, or any voids, or, or in between passes. 
And here are some general tips uh, for any welding test, pretty much. Follow the WPS. The WPS stands for Welding Procedure Specification. And every test will have one. And whether you know it or not, you may be being tested on your ability to follow a procedure as well as your welding ability. So read that thing. It's going to have ranges for voltage and wire feed speed, interpass temperature, which means how, cool off, how cooled off it needs to be before you start on the next pass, things like that. It is an important document. When you get to a test, your nerves are going to be going. That's the, that's the first thing that's going to happen is you're not in your environment. We were just talking about this earlier. Trying to just set up in this booth, neither of, neither of us are in this environment at all. So we're getting here, we're setting up. Same thing when you go to a test site. You're going to be using equipment you haven't used before, tools you, you don't know where they're, they're coming from or who else has used them, what you're kind of getting yourself into. So uh, just being alert of that, your nerves are going to be on a different level. You're not going to be, you're not going to be welding at 100%. Let's just put it that way when you go and take a test. What I was always told is you train to 100%. Yeah. So when you go into a situation, you're running at 80%. 80% is, is plenty good enough to be able to pass the test. Yeah. All right. Let's do the second pass. Come on. They are getting w away from weaving on structural tests like this. They have been for quite some time. So you just plan on doing stringer beads. However, there is that occasion when you, they will allow uh, a weave over top of the root pass. I've heard about it happening lots of times. But be prepared to run stringers all the way. Personally, if they would allow a weave over top of the root pass, I would weave because it's just you're a lot less likely to, to trap yourself. Stacking beads, if you don't do it properly, you can stack the first one too far over and then you don't have room to put the second one. So uh, this should be listed on the WPS. You may want to ask. So we're going to do stringers now. Andrew's starting on the right-hand side, and then he's going to do right-hand side first and then the left. It doesn't really matter which one you do first, whatever your preference is. Now what I would be looking at right here is I'd be looking at my right-hand side to try not to completely chew off that edge of the bevel, and I'd also be paying attention to the left-hand side, trying not to go over too far that it would pinch myself in the corner for the next pass. Always plan one beat ahead. Also, you're thinking about stick out and gun angle. The stick out is also called CTWT or contact, contact tip to work distance, and it's pretty important. There is some forgiveness. There is a little leeway there as well as the gun angle, but it's just something to be thinking about. <laughs> it looks like we're in pretty good shape here. We've got a nice little groove there to... to to uh, put that second pass in. It's not too tight to burn in. So we're going to do that right now. And I think actually between these two beads, there's not much need to let it cool. It might actually even help here to, to kind of weld it while it's good and warm. Because if there is a crease there, it's hard to get into. It'll help it a little bit being kind of preheated. But again, follow the WPS. Again, we're in pretty good shape. We, we want to be slightly below flush here. Now, a good way to, to figure out your technique and your settings for the cover pass is just run beads on plate. Just pad beads like this here because it, that's about the same thing you're doing when you're putting a cover pass on. So this is where you can easily grab a piece of plate and stack beads and figure out the settings. I generally drop the, the, the heat a little bit, if, especially if I'm just almost flush. Another good joint to practice uh, on for the for the settings for the cover pass would just be a T-joint. Not so much the first pass because you can handle a tremendous amount of heat on that first pass, but stacking two beads over that, now you can kind of, it's similar, it's similar anyway to what you would do on the cover pass. So if you're practicing to take a test and you don't have many beveled plates, this is good practice as well, especially in dialing in your settings. You want to also pay attention to keeping your nozzle clean as you go. All right, time to put that cover pass on. And again, Andrew's starting on the right-hand side. He's just going to put a two-bead cover pass on here because it's only 22 and a half degree bevel, and two beads is really all it takes. Doing a very slight, very slight weave. You can even hear it's got a little bit of different sound because we lowered the uh, the settings to about 23. <laughs> 
23 volts and 275 inches a minute for the cover pass. And that seemed to work out pretty good. All right, let it cool a little while. And then that last bead will go on there. And this is exactly the same, uh, same technique, just a very slight weave here. Again, you want to pay attention to the WPS because it might give you limitations on, on your bead width. Doesn't let you doesn't let you do any weave, you just have to run straight on. But most people I know generally find out that just a very slight slight wiggle like this kind of helps it go in. Kind of plays the light around too and helps you stay on track, helps you see the edges and center of the bead that you're stacking it on. Wait for it. <laughs> Like this right here. <laughs> when I was competing, Rick used to say, when you get done with your project, when your right arm gets sore from wire brushing, you switch over to your left. <laughs> That's when you know it's clean. <laughs> Alright, as far as acceptance criteria goes with the AWS D1.1, generally you're going to be shooting for uh, an eighth of an inch or less of cap height. That's weld reinforcement on this side with only a one thirty-second max undercut. You don't want any arc strikes, any slag inclusions, or any visible porosity or anything like that. You might remember I was at this same place in this same room several months ago interviewing Andrew when he just got back from placing fifth in the World Skills competition in Brazil and he placed fifth in the welding in the welding competition there so I want to get Andrew to catch us up a little bit on what's what's going on since since he got back from the competition so beginning of this year I started at an independent um, pipe welding contractor and I had the opportunity to go to move to Cleveland Ohio work for Lincoln Electric so I ended up making the move mid April and I've been there about a month so it's everything's been going well there's a lot of career opportunities that are at hand right now and further on down the down the line so uh, it's a good career move for me stay tuned for the 4G that's the overhead plate test it's going to be very similar to this one but there are some things that probably we need to talk about for overhead as opposed to vertical uphill that might help and that should be coming pretty soon.